All right, here we go, guys, and I'm at the 2023 Rhode Island Saltwater Fishing Expo up in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm giving my good friend John Skinner a hand at his booth. He had a big seminar on this day in the mid-afternoon, and I uh, covered his booth while he was at the seminar. And when I wasn't covering his booth, I had an opportunity to walk around, meet some of the vendors, and I filmed some clips of, you know, some of these vendors. It's a little bit of everything. You're going to see fishing charters. You're going to see lures. Uh, fishing rods. If you weren't at the show, hopefully this gives you a little bit of the flavor at the show. And if you weren't there this year, I highly recommend this show. Just a lot of everything. And let's start it off with my good friend Dustin, who has a very unique charter business up in Rhode Island. All right, guys, we're here with Rhode Island Kayak Fishing Adventures. Yeah. My main man, Dustin. What's going on, Dustin? Going Dustin on? and I fished together this fall. We did. In Rhode Island. And I, I think Dustin has one of the coolest, absolutely, things you have to do uh, fishing type charters. Dustin, tell us about it. So I run Rhode Island Kayak Fishing Adventures. We do uh, kayak fishing charters as well as shore fishing tours. Uh, we typically take people out on Hobie kayaks, fully rigged, providing everything that you'll need for a day of fishing. Um, it, it's, it's a blast. We do fresh water, we do salt water. Uh, about $300 to get you on the water for one person and the price goes down a little bit as you add more people. We can take big groups of up to six people if you want to bring all your buddies or your family out or you know, an office party or what have you. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely worth something to And do you uh, need to have experience? Uh, no, we take newbies all the time and you know, we put them on some, put them on some pretty nice fish there. So. Uh, yeah, so what, what are some of the saltwater fish you target? Uh, we target a lot of striped bass uh, from May all the way throughout the summer, and people go really crazy for albies August, September, October. Um, and also Tatog, we do a lot of Tatog specific trips too. So uh, we have our hands full with, with the species, but I would say if we would choose one species, it would probably be striped bass. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, it, I may take you up on this if I get a free day because this looks like so Please much fun. Please do. Please yeah. do. All right, good luck at the show. And if people want to reach you, Dustin, how do they get more information? You can information? reach us on IG at RI Kayak Fishing Adventures. Also, the same email address at gmail.com. Um, Facebook as well, Rhode Island Kayak Fishing Adventures. So just reach out to us and uh, we'll get you on the water. Awesome. Good luck at the show, Dustin. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we're here yeah. at the Ocean Tamer Marine Beanbag booth. Literally everything at this show. Here's Frank. Frank, I, I tell everyone who comes on my boat that the most comfortable place on the boat, bar none, is the beanbag. Right. So you got a, you got a line of them here. Why don't you uh, tell us what you got and give us the particulars? Sure. So we offer four different models. Um, we offer the arm chair, which is this one over here, the teardrop which is our biggest seller and our most versatile. The wedge, which is our smallest footprint, so if you have a smaller boat, it fits in tighter areas a little bit better. We also have the traditional round, which is the one over here. All of our models come in several sizes, so depending on your boat size, your passenger size, we have something to accommodate pretty much everybody. Um, they're all 100% marine grade. We offer a full lifetime warranty on all of our products. Uh, they're all manufactured in our facility in, in Florida, so um, you got, you know, basically a, a, a U.S. made product. Um, yeah, awesome. And if people were wondering about the price, how much yeah. so our typically prices, these go Our for? prices range from 129 to 189 depending on the size and style you choose. We have some customization options like adding logos and things like that that you can add as well. So Awesome. And if they want more information? Yeah, they can visit our website at www.ocean-tamer.com. Or they can always call our office at 1-800-804-0314. I love the Made in America part. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, Appreciate it. Welcome. Good luck at the show. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're here at the Jig em Up booth, and we're here with V. Good morning, buddy. How's it going? So, so far, V, so I, good. I, I, I walked by, and these things look so cool. Uh, I had to stop and ask, why don't you tell us about some of these products? Well, let's start with this project first. So. Last year we came out with the squid idea, which is this one, as you can see. And those are mainly used for fluke fishing. And we have them in three different sizes. We have them in two ounces and three ounces and six ounces. Most likely last, next year we're gonna be doing a 12 ounce one. 
but I don't know where I'm going to fit that in this booth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it looks like there's a, a swing hook on them too. There is double hook on uh -huh. them, double single hooks. And if you look at them pretty close, they are aligned with the jig. So whenever you're using them, you cannot get snagged with anything. Because when you're working it this way, the tips of the hooks, they are always pointing out. Interesting. So we had, it took a lot of study to come out, to come out with this idea. And finally, we got it now, so this is what we're doing to uh, prevent people from getting the bottom while they are fishing and losing tackle. Very cool. And anytime... And it's, it's a beautiful looking jig too, I mean it... Thank I, you. I, it never shows up well on camera, but this, and th this looks that, like a brand new car that, that just had a, a custom paint you, job. Let me give you a small surprise. It glows in the dark. Yeah, very nice. This very one nice. and those two tentacles. I mean, it really controls. looks like a squid. Oh, yeah. So whenever you drop it down in the water, it has that glittering effect. So it imitates the closest we can to a natural squid. Now, this is the squid part. Let us move to the fish part. So here we have, if you want to take a video of these. Last year, we were right here between the 836 and 16, 16 gram yep. and this is where we were and now we extended to these sizes because most people they were asking for bigger lures that they go that you can use them in deeper water so we came up with the two ounce uh, jig and the two ounce spoon jig that we usually use for tutag if you use them as a jig, you jig them off the bottom, you get to tug on them. But if you with drag or without them, bait, are we without saying, bait? You're saying you are jigging up tug with absolutely that. without bait. But sometimes when they get finicky, I use this stinky balls, and I don't use a whole bowl. I split this in half, and I use it only on one hook just to give them a taste or a smell. Wow. But in general, I don't, I don't like to use bait. That's the main no. objective. Now, when does the, when does the yingling get uh, brought into the equation? <laughs> well, the yingling, I got it yesterday and okay. I didn't have it. So right. I just kept it here and nobody touched it. Uh. So this is the jig that I was talking about that we use for tutag. And the way that we use this is when you pick it up and it's dropping back down, the beauty of it, when you're dropping it back down, the hooks will go and start swinging when it's going down. And this is the exact effect when you get closer to a crab. The only mechanism of defense that they have, they pick up their arms to defend, defend themselves. And that's what this animation that, is. That is very interesting. So this is what triggers the tutog to hit the, to hit the jig. And if, this, if people wanted more information about you this can, entire line? You can visit us on Instagram and on Facebook and you can ask any question that you like on those two. And it's Jig em Up on... Jig em Up, yes. Jig, J-I-G dot E-M-U-P. You can find us on Instagram. And on top of that, uh, this May, we're starting a new thing, an instructional videos to show you how to use them and how to get more out of your buck while you are fishing. And that'll be on YouTube or on? It's gonna be on YouTube, exactly. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you. I really appreciate You're it. Be good welcome, luck at the buddy. show. All right, we're at the appropriately named Stinky Balls booth, although it does smell fine here. It does not smell in any way uh, terrible. Sure. And we're here with Lee. Hey. Lee. Hey, Jerks, how's it going? <laughs> Just wanted to... Uh, Give you a little preview of what we have to offer here. We have uh, six core blends on the salt, on, excuse me, on the freshwater side, ranging from two target species with catfish and trout. The rest are universal for freshwater. These just came out, and excuse me, Valentine's Day. They're called tips. They're a little bit smaller than a traditional ball. Great for ice fishing. Oh, they all have UV properties. Gotta, gotta love the names you've added to all these. Yeah, so that's this what we say. Get if, me if, demonetized. If it's too, too big for the full thing, you give them the tip. Oh man. <laughs> and then uh, we have a full uh, six varieties on the saltwater side. They're all made with ground down bait fish, shellfish, or worms. 
We add amino acids for a bite stimulant. All you do is simply put one or two on a hook with whatever it is that you're fishing with. Yeah, so if you're fluke fishing and you're using a teaser, let's say. Correct. Yeah, you, instead of putting a gulp on, you're suggesting we yeah, can add. If you have a bucktail, you just put one or two on. You could put a, buck, a gulp on after it. Not a plastic guy, but um, you know, just put one or two on. You're going to get 20 to 40 minutes of continual scent. Uh, and ten, it's, Then it'll essentially swell and uh, come off the hook. So it's clean on, clean off. Hopefully you have a couple fish in the meantime. But uh, that's the story of the Stinky Balls. Awesome, awesome. And if people wanted more information, they Stinkyballs.com. We are uh, on Stinky Balls brand. Uh, Zuckerberg didn't like just regular Stinky Balls. I, so I, on Facebook I, I'm and Instagram. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> or so Stinkyballs.com, you say. Or Stinkyballs.com. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, Lee. Good luck. Thanks, jerks. Take care, guys. All right, we're at the Minn Kota booth, and we're here with Bill. Yes, sir. And Bill, you, you have something exciting you want to show us with, with oh, Hummingbird. Man. Yeah, it, so for those that are using the Hummingbird unit, we have the opportunity to put a Coastmaster uh, chart in, and the Coastmaster chart allows you to do shaded relief. Uh, it does a fabulous job of showing you all of the artificial reefs that are public numbers. They're, they're on the chart, so I can literally press the check mark and I can go find the nearest. So I can find the nearest tide station, I can find the nearest wreck, obstruction, caution areas, points of interest, what have you. It's great for navigation, but more importantly to those of us that love to fish, it's going to put us where the fish are and that's what we came here for in the first place. Right, and I, I'm presuming you could be used to fishing a, a body of water forever and you may not know that, hey, a mile this way, there's a reef, there's a rack. There, it, it happens all the time when That's we right. get, you know, uh, like when we all got Navionics, we discovered so much new stuff. Now, if you have a Hummingbird unit, you add the Coastmaster chip, and it gives you all this added information that you probably didn't know existed. That's right. And you don't have to go get the numbers from uh, reefball.com or some other source for the reefs. They're already on there. You can go look up what the uh, particular wrecks are, and then you get some descriptions of what they are. You find out that it's a this is a barge. It was sunk in 1933. The accuracy is one to three meters. So you have the ability to go to that location without having to sit there and put in a lat long and then go to it. Very cool. Very cool. Well, appreciate the time, Bill. Good luck at the show. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, we're here at the Saltwater Edge exhibition booth, and they got a really cool event coming up on April 22nd here in Rhode Island called the Striper Kickoff. And here's some of the plug makers that will be there. Now, I'm not a surf guy, so I've been assured, though, that these names will ring bells and get people excited who do a lot of that. And uh, to help talk about this a little, here's Eric from Fishing Edge. Eric, how you doing? Good, good. Yeah, Eric from Saltwater Edge. Saltwater Edge. Yeah. I, I've gotten the name wrong seven times <laughs> now. Apologies, Eric. Um, yeah, so we're here at Risa. It's a great show if you guys have never attended. Um, we always have a great time here. Great to catch up with people, show people some new products. Um, and then we get to talk to people about our, uh, our kickoff event on April 22nd. Uh, last year was incredible. Uh, we had like five or six hundred people there come through the store, come through the plug tents. Um, this year we're even bigger. We've got more plug builders, more vendors. We're going to have some amazing in-store specials. Uh, put it on your calendar. It's going to be a great time. Awesome. Well, thank you and uh, good luck at the show. Then, again, guys, um, not a surf guy, but I've been assured that... Uh, <laughs> This is a big deal in the surf world, having these plug makers there. Thank you again, Eric. Appreciate yeah, no your time. No problem. Thank you. All right. We're here at Black Hole USA. And, you know, those of you that know fishing know that Black Hole is one of the most custom, amazing rods that you can buy. And we, we, we're privileged to be in the company of a legendary angler who <laughs> fishes Black Hole rods for everything. Fluke, tuna, Jimmy the Greek, world famous Jimmy the Greek. That is my favorite rod. Um, when we first tested the rods with Kill, when he first brought them into the country and we were testing all the prototypes, I was so impressed with the rods that I'm with them ever since. All right, and Jimmy, we want to talk about your favorite 
tuna rod, something we don't show on my channel usually, but your favorite tuna rod and then your favorite fluke rod. My favorite tuna rods, uh, actually we have two styles, the seven foot giant and the six foot giant. The six foot, I cut them to make them into a stand-ups with the 80 um, internationals. <clears throat> and when I fish for uh, personal use, I use the uh, seven foot longer ones. The, we call them gun, gunnel rods. <clears throat> and that's basically my setups for giants. The, uh, the other favorite rods that I have is the uh, Challenger 731M, which is medium, and the uh, 691L, which is lighter. I'll show you those. Hi, guys. Excuse me. This is the 731L. This is the ultralight, but it's basically the same rod. I love to fluke fish with these and sea bass. So this is more of a slow pitch rod, I presume? Slow pitch. It's a softer, more portabolic. You can bend the tip and you can see it, how portabolic that yeah. is. Okay, has a very good backbone here, but also a soft tip to absorb shell, sharks and, how and head How heavy shakes. with uh, lures do you go on that? What's the heaviest ounce you would use? On the, uh, on on the, the L, uh, four to six ounce you can do easily. Okay. On the M, the 731M, which is, I must say, one of my favorites, I've gone as high as 12 ounces. Wow. Most of the times, we fish with six to eight, with no issues whatsoever. Even in deep water, that we primarily target giant uh, doormat fluke. Okay, so my favor, personal favor, is the 731M. It's an all-around ride. Very cool. Well, Jimmy, appreciate. First of all, great meeting you in person. My pleasure. And appreciate your time, and and if and we'll. Uh, Black Hole USA, I mean, they're, they're all over the place. We'll, we'll link uh, the website in the, uh, in the description. It was Thank my honor again. to talk to you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Good luck at the show. Thanks. Enjoy it. So I'm here at uh, ANS Tackle, just happens to be next to the Skinner booth. And I'm here with Steve, the owner proprietor of Swansea Mass ANS Tackle. And Steve, you and I were talking. You've got a couple of really neat things that. One I've seen before and used, another I've never seen before. Why don't we start with the thing I've seen? Oh, the flutter uh, spoons? Yeah, you got... A lot of people have them, but, uh, you know, I like something that's quality, that's going to last. Um, I have them with a the Menhaden finish on the front and either cr chrome or gold on the back. But these are solid stainless steel, so they're not going to rust. A ball bearing swivel, that's a 140-pound test. Split rings are stainless. And they have a BKK 6066 for extra strong ultra corrosion resistant. That's what I use on spoons. But I would add a stinger hook on the top. And we talked about that. That's very interesting. You mentioned that all those hits we feel. When it's dropping back, they're hitting the head of the spoon. So with the, with the uh, assist hook, you'll hook up a lot more. The only thing I find, though, sometimes you get fouled hook with the assist. They're in the back of the fish. But these things are crazy. I can't believe... I just started Believe using me, these in know. September, <laughs> and I saw John Skinner's video, and it's, you don't even have to know what you're doing. Right. But there is a technique. You don't jig it a million miles an hour, you, a, a slow lift and a slow drop back. Right. So you can feel them hit as it's dropping back. If you do it too fast, you have to watch the line, because if it stops with the belly, there's a fish that right, hit it right. and it's sinking. <laughs> That's actually happened to me, so yes, you are 100% yeah. correct. And then uh, you, you, you showed me this, which you you know you, you talked about. You got the idea for this I 40 was, years ago, I right? I was walking down the street. I saw a piece of mylar, and like a fish, it's bright. It attracted me, so I cut it into strips, and I put it into a tube. And I made this initially for cod fishing, where when you jig it up as on the dropper, the water pressure closes it. And when the jig pulls it back, it opens, so it actually does a little pulsating. And I use these for cod fishing. I use them on umbrella rigs. I'm using basically PVC tubing that's tough, 
this will hold up to at least 10 bluefish. It doesn't rot, doesn't crack. And I used to be a chemist, so I color all my plastic. I can do anything. Uh, I make them look like macro, uh, sand deal color, uh, you know, red's great. But I, I do a lot with tubes. And up here in New England, we do a lot of trolling with the tube in the right. water. And one of the best tube and worm fishermen up here is Charlie Saws. He writes for the on the water and the fishermen. And this is big up here in New England. But right. these flutter spoons, um, they blow me away. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I'll be heavy yeah. with those, those well, this and, year. Uh, and yeah, so plenty of them, priced reasonably too. Two for 44 for the 9 inch, two for 42 for the 8 inch. Uh, www.astackle.com. My email address is astackle at comcast.net. Oh, we don't want people emailing you. Oh, not, no, no, not no. My viewers. Oh, but, uh, take, take that off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. They're, they're all good people. A little crazy, but good. All right, well, listen, Steve, good luck at the show. Thank you for John, the time. Thanks, I appreciate and, uh, it. Good luck with all this. Great stuff. All right, we're here at Flippin' Out Charters. One of my, probably my biggest disappointment this year. There's my buddy Garrett in the top left. I was supposed to fish on this boat, and uh, we got canceled because of the weather, but probably the top boat in all of Rhode Island, if you are looking for a six-pack targeting fluke and blackfish, and an inspiration to me because Captain BJ, who's right here, we're going to meet in a second, hey the innovator when it comes to offshore trolling motors in the Northeast, the first boat I ever heard of using a trolling motor up here right. was Captain BJ. Captain BJ, tell us a little bit about your operation. Uh, yeah, I've been... Uh Charter fishing out of Newport probably 15 years now. Started fishing Newport uh, with my grandfather years ago. Um, so it's something that uh, I watched the blackfish really be incredible. I watched it disappear and I watched it come back full. Fishing's been incredible over the last bunch of years. So um, the trolling motor technology helps with my Minn Kota, being able to sit on those shipwrecks and sit still. Uh, and everybody realizes now that it's the it's the way to go. A little safer fishing, you know, you're not fixed to the bottom. Um, so if you have a situation where you got to get off the spot quick, it's kind of nice with the trolling motor. But uh, I mean, the fish has just been off the it's been off the hook. It's been getting better and better. Uh, a lot of people have been coming to Rhode Island now, and I and I think a lot of out of state charter boats and everybody I think has been respecting the fishery. <coughs> Everybody's been letting. Well, no, I think every. Well, because I do a lot of Rhode Island trips too. I'm yeah. a New York charter. So I, I see I do see people respecting it, and they realize how precious the fish are, how uh, slow they grow. Um, so it's really nice to see that everybody letting the big fish go. And you know, I'm 100 percent in agreement yeah. with you. I I encourage all my clients. Yep. Anything big, fluke or blackfish. Yeah. And you're probably best known, though, for those two species, fluke and yeah, blackfish. I, I mean, we're super lucky fishing Newport. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, the striped bass fish has been off, it's incredible, too. So it's, um, it's really something where we're lucky the future looks bright, I think. Uh, we just got to keep working the, uh, the same, uh, just kind of respect the fishery. You know, just realize that the fish is slow, uh, slow growing, take what you need and let the big ones grow. And uh, the problem I had this year on my charters is we broke off a lot of fish. So the guys are lightening up their gear and the fish are getting a little bit bigger and bigger in Newport. So I had a two week stretch. I think we broke 12 fish off. Wow. And then Garrett got that nice fish up there. And, 17, and, I'm trying to remember yeah, what it was. 17 something yeah. almost, yeah. And uh, it was a beautiful fish, but I, I was losing it because I broke off 12 before he got that fish. I'm wow. so happy he caught it because um, so it's 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 super uh, exciting to see what the features. You know. And if people want to book a trip with you, so I am booked up for the fall. Okay, I, I am booked up. Uh, what about for uh, fluke or fluke stripers? And, yep, I, I have. How, some, how would they reach you? Uh, flipping out charters, uh, just probably Facebook or just uh, you know give me a call. Um, you want to give you a number here? Yeah, sure. Four zero one five two nine two two six seven, and you give me a call. And I still have springtime talk trips. Uh, summer bass trips, um, do a little sharking, some fluking. Fluking got really good towards the end of the year last year. A little tough in the beginning, but then I really picked up nice. So Yeah, awesome. Uh, but yeah. So, well, great meeting you in person. Yeah. Good luck at the show. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. All right, awesome. Nice meeting you. Hopefully you can get on a boat with me someday. Yeah, hopefully. You know, so. Take care. All right. And that's going to be the end of our little tour. Uh, incidentally, I did purchase a couple of those uh, Tog Flutter Spoons that you don't need bait on. Hoping to try them in April. I might be able to target Tog this April. 
Um, and I also bought some of the stinky balls. So, hey, we'll see if that works. But again, like I said in the beginning, as a lot of the vendors said, it's a great show. If you can make it next year, highly encourage it. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.